In this video, you are going to learn all about how to address and hopefully fix your rib flare. As someone who has dealt with this myself and has helped countless clients go through the process of improving their own structural alignment, there's a thing or two that we need to understand as to what causes rib flare in the first place and what it is that you can do about it. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So let's first understand why your ribs may be presenting themselves in this flared position to begin with. One of the most common themes that you'll hear as it relates to a rib flare position is being fixed in the state of an inhale. If you just take a big breath right now, you'll probably feel how your ribs are lifting and potentially even shifting forward. Now what I want to pay attention to throughout the course of this video is us getting a better regulation around our breathing cycle to hopefully create more what's called centration around the diaphragm. But I also want to pay attention to where the rib cage is in space and where that is relative to your pelvis. So although it is true, if you are fixed in the state of an inhale, the ribs will certainly present themselves in this position. But it's also true that if I stand in a more extended position, that is also going to take my ribs and it's going to anteriorly shift them forward. Now I can do all the exhaling I want in the world here, but until I actually change my rib cage positioning as it relates to my pelvis, which is likely in a more anteriorly tilted position, we're gonna have a difficult time making long-term changes. So what we are gonna get into over the course of this video is not only getting better regulation of how we take an inhale and an exhale to not leave ourselves fixed in this flared position, but also get used to posteriorly shifting our ribs back to hopefully create more space through these back ribs and ideally allow our hips to get out of this anteriorly tilted position and meet our ribs in that more posteriorly shifted position. And if we can do that, then we're gonna have a lot higher likelihood of teaching our body where we want it to be in space. So when we go through our day-to-day -day movements or when we go to our strength training program, our body has a better understanding of where we want it to be in space. Now, chances are that if you are dealing with any type of rib flare or overly extended position, then probably the tissues around your mid-back, around your lower back, are probably feeling quite tight or bound up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to create some space through there using a specific type of breathing, and we're gonna try to introduce some pressure into your back ribs. Because chances are, if you're in this rib flare position, you're gonna have a difficult time actually accessing parts of your breath back here. Ideally, when we're going through any form of breathing cycle and we're getting some level of expansion, we want this to happen cylindrically, not only through our abdominal wall, but also in through the area around our rib cage. So we are going to do exactly that. For this, I'm gonna be using a BOSU ball. You can use pillows here, kind of folded in half as well, but a BOSU works really nice in terms of having an active feedback to work against. And I just have this slightly elevated on a bench. What we're gonna do is you're gonna come face down on top of the tool of your choice. And what we're gonna be mindful of is that we're not in over extension of the lumbar or of the thoracic to begin. So what I want you to do is actually allow some of that tension through your backside to just let go. So we're gonna allow ourselves to initially come into a little bit of spinal flexion, and we're just gonna to try to create some length through there. Now with the shoulders, what I want you to notice is that I'm not allowing my shoulders to be fixed in any form of retraction or elevation here. We're actually gonna allow our shoulder blades to come forward slightly in a attempt to get a little bit of protraction through them. So my shoulder blades, I'm taking away from one another. I'm gonna allow those tissues through the back side of my body to lengthen. And then ever so gently, you're gonna take an inhale in over the course of about five to seven seconds here. So I'm rounded out. I'm gonna take a smooth inhale. I'm gonna go into a smooth exhale over about five to six seconds. And what you're trying to sense here is that with 
each consecutive inhale that's coming in through the back ribs, you're trying to build another layer of expansion or length in through the back ribs. So what that would look like is if I take an inhale, we can see some space gets created there. Now what I can almost attempt to do is keep some of that length through the exhale. And as I go into my next inhale, I'm gonna get more expansion in through the back ribs. Now one thing to make note of here is that I am not forcing flexion in through my back. I'm not compressing my sternum back in order to try to bring more expansion into the back ribs. What I'm allowing to happen here is the expansion through my back ribs to build relative to the capacity of pressure that I can bring into there. So there's no need to force it and squeeze your abs here or anything crazy like that or your hip flexors where you're going into this excess of posterior tilt. Allow yourself to get heavy into the tool of your choice. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is use your breath to create the length rather than forcing muscle tension to try to get yourself there. What you should feel is from your lower to about your mid spine, you just get some nice even length through there. And you're gonna work through this for about 90 seconds to two minutes, take a break, and you're gonna cycle through that twice. So for this next technique, what you are going to need is a yoga block. You can also grab a book, water bottle, anything that you can have an active squeeze here with. And what we're gonna to start to work on is that principle of where our center of mass is in space. Because as I was touching on earlier in this video, if I'm in this anteriorly shifted position of my ribs, then chances are my entire center of mass is more oriented forward. So we're gonna to start to work on incorporating some of those breathing principles that we covered in the first exercise we're also gonna to start to connect this to our feet and a standing position. So what this is gonna look like is you're gonna grab the tool of your choice. You're gonna come up to the wall and we're gonna start with a squeeze of the tool and your elbows against the wall. And I want you to check in with where your hips are when you place yourself into this position. Do you find that your body is still trying to find some level of extension? through an anterior tilt or other means? Because if so, then we're gonna to start to draw ourself back slightly here. We're gonna ever so gently do a little bit of a posterior shift of the pelvis. Not a posterior tilt where I'm squeezing my glutes, but a posterior shift, which means I'm taking these sit bones and I'm going to shift them back this way. Now at the same time that we're doing that, we're gonna to start to target the breath into the back ribs, just like we were doing on the BOSU ball. So what this is gonna look like, and I'll exaggerate this for you to start, if I'm in a rib flared position and an anterior tilt, this may be where you're finding yourself. What we're gonna start with is you're gonna take your shoulder blades away without collapsing the sternum. So I'm keeping my skeleton and structure tall as I protract. If I'm in the anterior tilt, ever so slightly, we're going to shift the hip bones backwards. You're taking your two hip bones here and you're projecting them back this way. And then as you do that projection, we're gonna hold this position while we keep the space through the back ribs. Once we have ourselves kind of set up, and I would encourage you to monitor yourself with a mirror, or you can even record yourself as you're going through this, that is when we're gonna to start to initiate taking a inhale through the back ribs, keeping the hips and the rib cage in alignment in the process. If you wanna to start to build on this a little bit, I can keep the squeeze of the block and I can take my elbows off the wall, but I'm not changing the position of my shoulders. So I'm keeping my shoulders there and that's gonna give you a little bit of tricep feedback. And then you're gonna feel like you have the arms shoulders, ribs, and hips, all linked with one another. 
And all you're gonna work on is maintaining that positioning while you introduce that same pressure that you were working on in the previous exercise around this position. Now what I'd recommend in terms of duration here is anywhere between about 90 seconds to two minutes, being mindful that your hips and rib cage are in good position relative to one another, and you have that smooth cadence of the breath coming in over the course of about five seconds to a smooth draw out over the course of about five seconds. Try not to force air in where your neck muscles or your accessory muscles become overly utilized. We're trying to keep this relatively concentrated to our bigger breathing muscles, which are closer to our rib cage. So as you have come to learn, addressing your rib flare involves a lot more than just changing how you're breathing. That is certainly a part of it, but we also wanna to start to look at how the bigger pieces connect and relate to one another. If you're looking for more information on how those bigger pieces do relate to one another, you can check out a free program that I have down in the description below that really covers everything from your head all the way to your toes. And if you're into this type of content, then you can click another video that I did right here that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. I'll see you there.